Okay, so in our last video, I left off by running this line of code, and it, it works kind of, sort of, but there's there's a better way. So anyways, I'm going to move on to this code. I'm going to teach you how to use the ent make function. Later on, we'll compare that to the visual lisp equivalent of, not really an equivalent, but their version of ent make, I guess. So anyways, let's just run this this line of code. Just delete that line. I think I was doing a test between videos. Okay, so I just created a line. I got stuck into the command. If you run this, if that ever happens to you, just run uh, add this to your code. It might solve your problem, but um, there's better ways to, to create a line. So anyways, let's use this ent make function. I'm going to copy this. Paste it here. And there's our new line. So you might notice that I clipped the video. The reason for that is I went on a, a pretty poor exp explanation of the ent make function. So I'm going to give it another go. And just down here, what I've done is I put ent make all on one line. And essentially, you have the function and what more or less is a list of certain uh, DXF code or um, dotted pairs and DXF group codes here. And what you'll notice is when I create this entity here, Let's put it into the console for now. Then I'll go into my drawing and uh, select that line there. What I'll do is uh, ent get. Just select that line. You're going to notice that the DXF list, or the entity list rather, has a lot of these uh, group codes and these dotted pairs, right? The line is pretty basic, so it only has like one, two, three, about 10 or 12 of them, right? But um, other elements will have uh, at least like four lines of DXF codes. So anyways, you'll notice when I make, do this ent make, I only have what's five, five different codes here. And that's really, for basic elements, that's all you need. For more complex elements, you can uh, add more. But be aware that when you're using the ent, ent make function, some of these dotted pairs or DXF codes, you have to include them or the function won't work. There's some that are optional and there's some that auto, auto list will create automatically. And the ones that it creates automatically, there's typically no reason for you to try to, to include them in EntMake itself. So when you're using EntMake, um, a good strategy is to keep it as simple as possible, and you can always change the entity after you create it, of course. So if you're wondering for each element, like a line, a circle, a polyline, what is the minimum number of these little codes you have to include? There are uh, some pretty good references on the internet for that. Um, I think I found a good reference on a message board. If someone uh, asked me in the comments, I'll probably dig that out and post a link to it. But if, uh, if that can't be found, then it's just simple trial and error using the online help documentation from Autodesk and whatever else is available. And yeah, just browsing the message forms for uh, Autolisp resources. So the ent make function, it has this apostrophe here, right? And you might remember if you've created lists, hopefully you've gotten to that already. There's two ways to create a list, having this apostrophe does the same thing as using the list function here. But if I do my ent make, let's delete that apostrophe. Let's type list here. It doesn't work. So just be aware that you actually need this here. For that code, that line of code to run. So I don't know why that is personally. I thought maybe maybe it's the quote function, but that I think will fail too. Yeah, it didn't go. So you need to have that little apostrophe there. That's that's the format you have to work with. So I've just put that on one line just to show you what it normally looks like. I usually write and make like this just so I have all this all this in a row. Okay, so I mentioned there's some uh, group codes that are 
optional. So you don't even need this the group code for a layer. And right here is the color override. So what I'm going to do is create a line. And I'm going to override that line to the color blue, I think. That's index color 5. So let's run this line of code. Let's see if that created the element for us. And it did. So there's our, there's our blue line. And underneath it, of course, is, is the yellow line. So we could um, run that again just to be sure it worked. There we go. And sure enough, that line is recreated after we deleted it. So one important thing here is that these DXF codes, I can't go like this. I can't put that code here. These have to be in a specific order. They're not numerical. So when you put these codes in, they have to be in a specific order for each element. And the codes that are missing, like when I when I do that entity list, there might be a code right here. When I do ent get or or in between in between these two, that doesn't matter. It's just these have to be the required uh, dotted pairs and DXF codes. These have to be the ones you have to include have to be in the same order as they appear in the entity list. So let's uh, create that line one more time. Oops. Okay, let's go back here. Let's do a our int get. So this this code for color it only appears if the color is overridden. So if I haven't overridden the color, this this won't even appear. But nonetheless, you see all these codes. Just make sure when you're putting the ones in that you have to include. Just make sure they're in order, the same order you see here, right? Okay, so now we're back to Visual List, but I'm going to show you something quickly here. You can actually get model space as an object. So normally we're thinking of object-oriented programming as I've been describing it. You usually think of something, um, I want to use the word tangible here because, you know, like a line or a circle, those are tangible objects, right? But the model space, we don't really see that as tangible. That's the space that we work in. That's like almost like the universe, right? Anyways, we can actually get model space. So I'm going to dump model space and show you the properties of it. So it has all these properties. Um, Personally, I haven't ever used the properties for model space, but some of these are probably useful depending on the type of project you're doing. So anyways, this VLAX dump object, remember if you add the true argument to it, you're now going to get the methods, and th this is what's important to us. So we have all our properties up here, of course. Now we have the methods. Add circle, add pretty much every every object you can think of. Let's see if there's a add line in here. Maybe I passed it. Yeah, here we go. Add line. And I might have to refresh myself, but these I think are the required arguments for each each method. An add line, you can imagine what these two arguments are. That's probably the start point and the end point. So anyways, I got a line of code here. And remember, I'm going to store this line we created so we can do other functions on it, right? So I'm going to use set Q and name it new VLA line object. So we use VLA add line, but first we have to get model space or else Autolisp doesn't know where to add the line, right? We can add a line, but to what? To where? And then a very important point here is that a VLA object takes different information than a regular Autolisp object, right? So we have to use something called a VLAX 3D point function to create a special type of point for our new VLA line. So notice how that creates, it says variant, like that's the object it creates. And variants are something that are a little bit tricky to work with, just so you know, but uh, you can totally absolutely work with them. But that's uh, one reason I stick to regular Lisp is often that visual Lisp outputs things like variant, safe arrays, and other, other crazy objects that are a little bit harder to work with 
than I guess their, their regular Lisp equivalents. So if I find it easier to work with those entity lists, I'll usually go with regular auto Lisp. But if I find functions like uh, the visual Lisp methods are often quite easier than, than say using and make. So anyways, enough talking, let's, let's add our line. Just gonna type that in down there. Now I'm gonna copy this and bring this into our command line. Okay, here's our line right here. If you're wondering why it's on such a sharp angle, it's because of the points that I I inputted there. But anyways, let's uh, VLA put color, our new line, and let's change the color to index to one, which is red. So hopefully that works. Sure enough, it did. Okay, so that's a little more information to help you compare Autolisp to Visualisp. So thanks for watching up to this point. And coming up next, I'm going to actually get into the routine I made for this specific lesson. That's uh, lengthening the line, but lengthening the line from its center point. So we're going to get into that um, coming right up.